Okay, my Gary, front kick. Today I'm gonna to go over a few exercises and tips to try and improve your kick. So when we're trying to land the my Gary on a target, um, there's a few points to think about. Uh, first one is I wanna make sure that I'm landing with the knee still bent. So still kick left in the, uh, in the motion. I don't wanna kick with a fully extended leg because that should be in the target. Okay, so I wanna be connecting with my legs still bent as we make impact. Um, uh, an exercise or the way I like to train it really is just to kind of land it, hold that feeling, just put a little more pressure into me from here, and just hold that position for a second. Just feel that connection with the legs still bent. So we've got, still got some uh, extension left. Yeah, just getting that connection, form of the foot every time into the target. This way. Another thing to think about. Um, to avoid this problem where the kick skims upwards, um, what you often get is the kick kind of misses the target completely. What, in order to, to uh, combat that, is I must press the hips forwards. So, uh, angle again quickly. So from here, as I come up here, as I chamber the kick, the next action is to press the hips forwards. So the kick is going in, forwards. Yeah? If I don't, if I keep the hips kind of in the same position, and just lift the knee, I'm going to miss the target and skim up the pad. So I need to lift chamber the kick and drive the hip in. Chamber and drive the kick inwards. Drive it in this way. The third thing in order to um, increase the power we can generate with the kick is the same as with uh, my washigiri, where I'll cut the hand backwards, the top hand I'll cover, uh, cut back against the kick. I'll do the same kind of thing with the maigiri. So from here, I kind of cut that hand back against the kick, this way, as I'm going in, this way, pulling the hip, this way. Okay, so um, what you get a lot online is people saying, you must keep your hands up all the time, you know, kicking like this, hands up. I'm kicking with only my lower half of the body. Now we can use, at this range, my hands can be in this kind of safe position. The front hand can deal with that, back hand can come back a little, just to cut cut back and generate some more force in the kick. So a lot of times the problem with people's migrate is the foot position um, and getting the foot into the ball of foot, you know, landing with the ball of the foot correctly on the target. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of exercises to help to develop that control over the feet and mobility of the feet as well. So the first one, just an easy stretch, is I'm going to come down to the knees and I'm going to sit with my toes pulled back. So we're stretching the sole of the foot here, getting those toes stretched back. Okay, we can sort of work over to one side more and the other side more, just getting in here, just kind of stretching the, the muscles of the feet, um, getting that a little bit more flexible. Um, a second thing we can do is to gain a little bit more control over our feet. So what I like to teach sometimes is this kind of thing where I'll have my students have one foot up in the air maybe and make circles with the feet, you know, both directions, or we can kind of make the alphabet, you know, A, B, C, and just make the shapes of the, uh, the letters or numbers with the feet just to gain control over our foot position because a lot of the time the foot position is the problem more so than the actual delivery of the kick you know so we get used to sort of our positions with our kicks and uh, different positions we need to get into um, finally we can do calf raises a simple calf raise so we can do a calf raise we can use something like this we can drop the heels off a bit get a nice stretch on the calf and just pop up onto the toes this way. Down on, well, under control and pop back up again onto the toes. This way. Down and back up. Okay, so a few different things there to help try and get the feet into that better position for kicking. Uh, it's dorsiflexion is the name of when the foot is pulling upwards towards your shin. And that's what we need to improve. We can also work on the muscle that's responsible for that dorsiflexion, which is called the um, uh, tibialis anterior. So it's the muscle that runs up in front of the shin here. What we can do is we can sit here like this, put a foot in front and just raise the toes. Squeeze up there, putting that foot close to the shin and down. And just squeezing, just getting control over that and building some strength in the in that area so we can then get used to that chamber position with the foot tucked upwards in dorsiflexion. Another problem with the migari is often the chamber position. So a couple of exercises I like to, to show is uh, Number one, we come from a lunge position or a, or a split squat position. My knee's on the floor, 
I'm driving up off this leg, snapping the kick and back down. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm building strength in this front leg, but also making sure that I'm chambering correctly because if I don't, I can't get through. I have to lift up, chamber, re-chamber the kick to come back down again. Okay, it's impossible for me to throw the kick without chambering correctly. So I have to lift, kick, and back down. A more difficult version of that then is to come into a kneeling position. Okay, pop the hips up, throw the kick, and down again. Hips up, throw the kick, and down again. Again, it's another one that is impossible to do without chambering the kick properly and re-chambering the kick. Perhaps more importantly, you know, we have to kick, re-chamber the kick this way, come back down onto the knees. So a tip when trying to land the kick on your opponent is I don't want to chamber too high. If I chamber very high like this, it becomes easy to block. So I come up and then I've got to send that kick out and he can just cover this way. Just comes up and he can just cover that kick. So what I want to do is I want to almost bring it up in line with his thigh. Ride the kick up underneath. So it's actually going underneath his guard. So I almost like use this as kind of like a, um, a guide, the angle I want to ride, uh, drive it in. So from here, I come up into the body from underneath. That's the way I want to deliver the kick more so, like a rising kick almost here, up into the target. So hopefully there is a few different ideas for you to improve your Maigiri. Um, let me know what else you'd like to see in these videos. Drop a comment down below and I'll try to get to cover most of those things if I can.